Yo, what's up everyone? Um, honestly, this video, it's nothing special, but it's just a quick reflection. Well, I don't even know if it's going to be quick, but it's going to be a reflection on, you know, my thoughts on this whole trip to Africa. Um, so, I mean, might as well just get started. But this whole trip to Africa really was, I guess you could say, life-changing in a way that I really did not expect it, you know? Um, going there, you know, I was kind of expecting, you know, to see a completely poor, have-nothing, third-world country. But when I went there, it's not that they didn't have anything. It's just what they had was different from what we had. Um, going to Africa, they had cell phones, they had cars, they had homes, um, you know, but... The thing that was really different was, you know, like I've said, is that they live their life day to day worrying about, you know, putting food on the table that day, not about putting food on the table tomorrow, you know, but they do have phones, they do have service, they, you know, they're, they have social media, you know what I mean? They have the, the stuff that we do, just not to the scale we do. Um, they all have education, um, really. Um, but it's just, like I said, it's different. Um, you know, when I think now about a third world country, I'm not really thinking about them all being completely poor because they're not all completely poor. You know, what we were talking about while we were there is that, you know, the homeless, uh, or the unsheltered people here in America actually have more access to um, like life insurance, they have access to shelters, they have access to all these different aids to help them in life, to live a day-to-day -day life, compared to people in, um, in Africa. But other than that, I mean, it's just, it's kind of different um, living, but it's really important that we take advantage of what we do here, um, because if we don't, then I mean, it's just, it's really just gonna uh, fall downhill real fast but um I mean staying in Africa for about a week and a half it just it really opened my eyes to see you know that there really is a world outside of the US and that um how we live here is it's special but at the same time it's not like uh, we say that we have the freedom of speech but in reality we don't have that much freedom of speech especially at um, schools in uh, public places at times. Um, kind of like the uh, right to not serve, you know, at uh, businesses and stuff like that. Um, I mean, that's just, that's one example of not really having freedom, especially freedom of speech. Um, but there in Africa, I mean, you're free to speak how you would like to about certain things and about religion especially. Um, and, I mean, people don't really worry about it. Um, also, being there, it just showed you what community really was because they worked together to meet the everyday need and um, live life to the fullest, really. But here, we're worried about each uh, our everyday life and worried about providing for the next day, um, which, I mean, it's important, but at the same time, it's really not because, I mean, you forget about what's important in life right now and you stop enjoying the things that are really important. But... Um, I mean, like I said, being in Africa showed me a completely different perspective on what life really is and, you know, how other people live, especially. Um, while being there, I really built a lot of connections and relationships with people, especially. And if I can say, I would not want to change that for the world because, I mean, going back next year, hopefully uh, there's a trip next year with this group, but um, going back soon, um, I really plan on building those relationships more and more because the people that are there, I mean, they kind of provide something different that you won't in America, especially. You know, um, everyone wants to get to America um, for the fact of freedom. And don't get me wrong, there's different rights that each person gets, especially natural rights in America, but I mean, if I kind of had to choose um, whether I'd rather have a strong community and have a, a divine or true freedom of speech rather than having, I guess, a separate freedom here, I mean, I'd probably choose living in a different country.
at the same time, we have access to more and, you know, a more promising life here in America, especially with life insurance and retirement especially. Um, but, I mean, just being there and experiencing that especially was just different and it was amazing. Um, and it's definitely a trip I would say every person should and needs to go on. Um, going on a trip to a third world country, not just going to Africa or going to Canada or, you know, but actually going to a place like Africa or going to a place other than the U.S. Um, because, I mean, it shows you what a world is, what the world is, you know. And I was talking to one of my friends um, on the way back from Africa, and we we're, you know, I was just saying, I'm like, dude, we traveled halfway around the world, and we're back in um, the U.S., you know. And it kind of hit me then, you know, I'm like, I just traveled halfway around the world, and I'm home now, you know. And to think that not many people will especially have that experience in life um it kind of like broke me a little bit but at the same time you know we're very fortunate to be in the u.s also um before we left i think it was like the day before we left we went to a um what's the term a castle oh no we went to a fort that's the correct term but um, what they uh, what they were were a slave trading post. Um, when I went there, I mean, my uncle did a twenty three and me, basically like a like trying to figure out where you're from, you know. He did one of those, and we found out that I'm like twenty percent from Togo, Ghana area, which is actually where I went. So going there and going to that. Uh, that trading post, if you must, um, you know, I was just thinking, this is where my ancestors were, this is, you know, this is the exact place, I mean, it may not have been the exact place, but they had come into some relation of someone that went there at a certain time, um, and I mean, I was expecting, you know, for me to be re very heartbroken and really, you know, irritated, I guess you must. I mean, if you must say, irritated. But when I got there, you know, it kind of hurt me a little bit thinking, you know, my, you know, my grandparents and my aunts and uncles were mistreated um, at this time. But, uh, I mean, that's just, that really wasn't the case, I guess. You know, I was just thinking, you know, without this trading post or without this fort I mean I would not be in the United States you know what I mean um there's a good saying you know all things will work for the good you know and that's really true because I mean you think about life you know all the bad things that happen I mean that's just really life experience you know so you can help others but not only that but I mean the things that happened in the past the history um I mean that just it builds it builds up the future. So really, the things that you do today affect the things of tomorrow, whether they're good or bad. But also you gotta remember that the things that you do today um, that affect tomorrow, you have to learn to overcome them, especially if they're bad. So say you made someone mad, or say you got hurt um, the today, it's your choice whether you're going to overcome that tomorrow or whether you're gonna mourn about that tomorrow. Um, and it's important that you do that, especially going into settings like visiting a fort where there's history, and the history may not be pretty, but the history is the truth. Um, going back to thinking about the whole Colin Kaepernick situation, I'm not trying to put this thing on blast or bring this back to the present, because that's a thing of the past, but, I mean, you got to realize that those things happen for a reason, you know? And you can't, you can't say that you're anti this, anti that, you're pro this, pro that, you know, unless there's a genuine reason um, for it. And um, it's important to keep your beliefs true, keep your beliefs pure, and, you know, just really 
keep your beliefs humbled because I mean if you don't you're gonna end up in a situation where for instance like Colin Kaepernick you lose your job you know you lose a lot of your followers um, and you really lose your influence because you don't want that to happen to you you don't want that to happen to anyone but like it it happened you know what I mean um, but like I said you know if you were given the opportunity to go to a foreign land foreign country do it because you will be seeing different things than you really expected I mean even going to um, Brussels Belgium I think I don't even think it was Germany but it was right there on the border um, going there I mean that was a different life experience on its own because I mean not trying to be racial or anything but there was different people there um, I mean, I don't know if any of you guys watching this have gone out of country, um, especially overseas, but, um, when I landed in Africa and when I landed in Brussels and was leaving the airport, I noticed that there were, um, like military guys there with guns and stuff like that. I mean, if you think about that, and then going through customs in America is completely different. Because um, don't get me wrong, you'll, I mean, if you do something in America, you'll be met up by ICE or the FBI or, you know, whoever really, you know, um, that America has. But if you do something wrong in a place like Brussels, um, Belgium or Germany or whatever, or if you do something in, um, Togo, Africa, for instance, I mean, it's just, it's not really going to be pretty, you know, because you got guys with guns there already, you know, to take care of you, but, you know, just, this whole trip was a life experience, and I wouldn't trade it for the world, really, um, especially the time that I spent with the people I was with, um, they were able to help me through a lot of times, uh, a lot of, you know, tough, um, mental aspects, you know, just able to get through the next chapter, um, and also, I mean, just spending time with the guys there because they have basketball there, you know, and I play basketball. So, I mean, I was having a little bit of a hard time coming back to playing the game. I think it was like two weeks ago. I was horrible. But once I was able to break through a mental aspect of the game and just really break through that wall, I mean, I was, I was able to go full, full on, you know, going back to practice on Wednesday. It was amazing um, what how much the mental game and things can affect you really you know and even doing some of the, like my homework right now because i'm off of school uh i was off of school for like the last three days but like doing the work you know um i mean there was a poem not a poem but a um let me see what it is um this is an assignment from mark twain um what does it say there's many things. I mean, one of the quotes says, um, what was it? Anger is an acid that can do more harm to a vessel in which it is stored than to anything on which it is poured. I mean, that is, that's so deep. I mean, I don't know if you guys can understand that or really understood what I was saying right now. But, I mean, if you let things build up, I mean, you're gonna have to break through a bigger wall than what you expected. Kind of like with me playing basketball. I mean, I hadn't played basketball in like what three, four months. I mean, not that that's a bad thing because I was letting my body heal. But at times you let things build up so much that when you get back into it, when you get back to doing good or trying to do good, you have to break through this big wall. You have to break through this big obstacle. And in reality, it's mental because anger is a secondary feeling. Um, because you get anger from being disappointed or being sad, you know, anger is a secondary feeling. So when you are, when you don't play basketball or something like that for three months, for instance, your physical, um, part of the game is not there, but your mental part is a secondary thing to you physically not being there because when you're physically not there it causes you to doubt yourself and when you see you not being physically there it allows you or it doesn't allow you but it causes you to not believe in yourself anymore so therefore you have to break through a mental aspect 
of the game, a mental wall, um, and you kind of have to have a breakthrough. Um, and it also says courage is resistance to fear, mastery of fear, not absence of fear. Um, this really doesn't have to do with what I'm saying, but it was, I thought it was really good because um, people that have courage, people that are brave, um, it's not that they're blind to what's going on in the situation or what may happen, but it's that they've chosen not to let it affect them. Um, because I mean, it says mastery of fear, not absence of fear. They've mastered the aspect of not being fearful, but they've gotten to the point where they're not letting fear take over them so that they can do what they want, when they want, and how they want to. Um, I think, I mean, this whole trip and what's happened, you know, prior to this trip and after this trip, I think have really just been awesome. And, um, you know, I feel good about, you know, continuing doing life and, you know, just living life to the fullest, you know, because I've had experiences, I've been there, done that, you know, I'm not saying I got the t-shirt, you know, but, uh, I mean, I've just, I've been there and I've done that, you know, and I've had people around me that have encouraged me. Also, surround yourself around people that are going to lift you up, not tear you down, because I've been talking to some of my friends and lately they've just been saying, you know, because I'm trying to get back in the loop of things, trying to figure out what's happened, what hasn't happened, stuff like that. Um, but they're saying, you know, people have really just been making fun of others, you know, and telling them lies, you know, saying that, you know, that they're not really worthy, I guess, of doing certain things, you know. But in reality, I mean, who really is worthy of doing something? Um, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. And, you know, you have to surround yourself around people that are going to tell you the truth about you, the positive truth, because if you focus on the negative, then you'll find yourself, like I said, going through and trying to figuring out um, how to break through the mental aspect of things. Because it, when you do, that's when people tend to get a little bit depressed. And, I mean, people tend to get anxiety from different things, you know, trying to fix their life and trying to make things work, you know when they're not working but I say you need to surround yourself around people that are going to build you up not tear you down because I mean if I was around people that you know that really tore me down throughout this trip I mean I would not be able to get in front of this camera for what 18 minutes and talk you know and I think it's important that you are around people that are going to encourage you because if you don't fill yourself with encouragement with um you know and sh you don't let people show you and prove to you that you have a life full of potential then that's when you start falling behind that's when you start doubting yourself and not believing in yourself because at the end of the day that's the last thing that you want for yourself but that's the first thing that people that don't want to see you succeed that's what they want um they want to see you fail because, I mean, at times they know that they will end up failing. So they want to see you fail. Um, I mean, as, I mean, I'm sure I'll post some more videos about this trip, you know, and post some videos here and there about, you know, certain things and explaining them. Um, but honestly, this trip was uh, eye-opening and really it was heart-opening as well. Um, I'm really happy that I went on this, and I can't wait to see the people that I went on this trip with, especially. Um, but, you know, I just want to say thank you for those of you who have watched this video all the way through. If you have not already subscribed, please do, and leave a like if you like this video and you want to see more like this. I'm um, just talking, really, and, uh, you know, just saying what's on my mind. Um, you know, and then I will be posting um, the rest of the vlogs uh, within the next couple of days as I edit them and stuff like that because I was not able to there because I did not have internet for some reason. Um, it's heck of funny, but uh, it just didn't happen. So I'll just be I'll be posting the vlogs uh, here and there. Um, but uh, yeah, good stuff. So have a blessed week. Have a blessed day. Um, enjoy yourself. And think about the things that you do have and think about the things that you can work on and live your life day to day. All right, everyone. I just want to say thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you guys next time. All right.
Peace.